Hey, wedding photographers, if you struggle to get tack sharp ring shots, I understand. I used to struggle too, but I have found three tips that will allow you to have perfectly in focus tack sharp ring shots every time that you shoot. Hey there, I am Caitlin James. I'm excited that you found my YouTube channel and this is a place where I like to educate and empower photographers to build profitable and purposeful businesses while also letting you in on the behind the scenes of our day-to-day -day life. I am so excited about this episode because I am sharing three tips that are gonna help you get rid of so many struggles when it comes to photographing rings. So before we dive in, I did wanna mention two things. One, I am shooting my ring shots with a Canon macro 100 millimeter lens. It's the L series. There are non L series options, but this has image stabilization, which is a game changer when it comes to shooting very detailed, tight ring shots. I've been using this lens for years. I absolutely love it. We actually have two of them so that Michael can photograph um, cuff links and really expensive watches on wedding days in great detail. So the second thing about using a macro lens is that you have to understand that it's a little bit different than shooting with any other lens. The compression and the focus, the depth of field, everything is just way more sensitive. If you try to take your normal settings and what I normal, normally teach about shooting with prime lenses and shooting pretty wide open and apply it to this lens, you may actually run into some issues. Because if you have a ring that uh, has prongs that are a little bit higher up and a little bit bulkier and you're trying to shoot really close, you're trying to shoot at 2.8 like Caitlin does, you may find that you were really struggling with focus more so than with any other lens and you don't understand why. And it could be because how of how sensitive it is, how sensitive the depth of field, how shallow the depth of field is. You're working with such a thin line with this lens. And a lot of that is due to the longer focal length um, and the fact that it's macro and it's allowing you to get a lot tighter and closer to your subject. So those two factors combined make it a very sensitive lens to work with. So moving on to point number one. Point number one is that you always wanna focus on the prongs. And a lot of times this doesn't make sense to photographers because the prongs aren't the expensive part, right? It's the diamond. Don't you wanna focus on the diamond because that's where all the money is? That's the most valuable part of the ring. Right, it makes sense, but visually, if you notice, if you look at ring shots and the prongs are out of focus, but the diamond is in focus, you actually visually, our, our minds tell us that that is not a tack sharp image. I don't really know why that is, but I learned that early on in my career and it really saved my ring shot. So no matter what ring I'm shooting, I'm always focusing on the prong and I'm always trying to focus on the prong that is closest to me. Um, so that means if I'm shooting slightly from an, uh, a, higher angle, I'm gonna shoot on the top, I'm gonna to focus on the top two prongs. If I'm shooting slightly from the left or the right, I'm shooting on whichever prong is closest to my lens. Because if you just slightly have one in front of the other, um, anything that's in the foreground of the plane of focus is gonna be incredibly blurry and out of focus. Because remember, the, the 100 millimeter macro is incredibly sensitive. So you always wanna focus on the prong no matter what. Now, a lot of times um, I have found that there are differentiations between different ring styles. Some prongs are really dramatic and they kind of stick out above the diamond quite a bit. And because it's such a sensitive lens and you're, and you're shooting such a sensitive, tiny little detail, if you notice the prongs are kind of big and excessive, you might have to actually increase your aperture in order to still have the diamond in focus. But because the focus falls backwards, normally when you focus on the prong, no matter what aperture you're in, normally the diamond will automatically be in focus because if you're focusing on the prongs, the diamond is behind the prongs. Even just if it's centimeters, which it is, just centimeters behind the prongs, the diamond will always fall into that focal point, uh, into that focal range. So think about it this way. If you're photographing a ring and you focus on the prongs and you still don't think it looks tack sharp, there's nothing wrong with increasing your aperture. And I would increase your aperture. And uh, again, you want to make other adjustments. You're not just incre increasing aperture. You're also going to probably need to increase your ISO a little bit, maybe lower your shutter, but not lower than one over 200. Right. If you accidentally have a shutter speed that is too wide open for the lens that you're using, you're gonna run into an image that looks out of focus when really, it's not that it's out of focus necessarily, it's that you are introducing camera shake and motion blur and that cannot be fixed in post-processing at all. So tip number two is to pay attention to the plane of focus. So the plane of focus is the concept of making sure that your rings, if you're shooting all three rings, that they're gonna line up in line together. So whether you're clustering them together or lining them up in a straight row, you wanna make sure that wherever the prongs are, that everything else is in line with the prongs of the ring. Not the diamond and not the band of um, the engagement ring, but 
the actual prong of the engagement ring. I, that's something that I messed up on so often when I first started. Um, I used to align the bands of the rings. I wanted all the bands to be in a row and then I would squat down and kind of shoot straight on. And I didn't understand necessarily why I couldn't get everything in focus. It's because you don't want to line up the bands, you want to line up the prongs of the engagement ring um, with the bands. If, if your goal is to get the bands in focus. So same thing if you're trying to step your ring game up a little bit, you want to have some foreground and background. When you think about the plane of focus, flowers that are going to be kind of in the foreground and kind of peeking into the edge of your lens are going to be incredibly blurry. It's just going to look like this really cool softening, softening effect. Um, you could also put them behind decently behind the rings and have really cool bokeh and creaminess in the background. But all that has to do with planes of focus. And if you can think about focusing on your prongs and then focusing on your plane, your plane of focus, then all of a sudden you start to realize why you're running into so many issues where it kind of looks in focus, but half of it isn't. Or the bands seem to be incredibly blurry. I don't know why they, they seem like they're in the same plane of focus. When you look above though, and you start really analyzing, is this exactly in the same plane? you will become aware that some, maybe you're not being meticulous enough. Maybe you're not paying attention to the plane enough. And that's actually a huge, gonna be a huge solution to your focusing issues. Third tip is that you wanna pay attention to your position. And I actually think that beyond the fact that you should focus on the prongs, this is probably the most important tip in my opinion. Because once you have your rings lined up and you pay attention to the plane of focus that they're all on, then the way that you're shooting and the angle that you're shooting is so important. I see so many photographers, one, they're not, a lot of people don't shoot close enough. All right, and maybe that's because of focus issues. I think a lot of photographers are unaware of how sensitive this macro lens can be. So they get closer and they feel like they can't focus. But now you have something very specific to focus on and you know that you can increase your aperture quite a bit in order to get everything in focus. So we fixed that problem. Well, now we're paying attention to your plane of focus. If you're shooting something on a table, you know, I'm standing in front of a table right now. If I shot something from a table just pointed straight down, that's gonna be a problem because I'm only gonna get the top lines of those prongs in focus. I recommend when you're first starting to shoot ring shots, trying to be as even with them as possible, trying to be on the same plane of focus as possible. Because yes, you're gonna to have to worry about what's in the background if you're exactly on the same plane of focus as them, but it's gonna be so much easier to get that focus where you want it to because you're gonna be shooting straight on and you're not gonna have any angles that are distorting your focus. Another reason why position is so important is that I have found constantly when I'm on wedding days, um, you might see me, if you're in KJ All Access and you watch me photograph weddings, you might see me shoot ring shots and then try to shoot it again, but I'm like literally making slight, slight adjustments like this. And it's not because I'm going crazy or I'm about to pass out, it's because I'm seeing something called a facet reflection. And this it differs between rings. Every cut of a diamond is different. And there are some cuts of diamonds that cause facet reflections that if you have a facet reflection when you're photographing a ring, even if you're photographing the prongs correctly, even if you are focusing in the right place and your plane of focus is perfect, if your position is wrong and you're getting that glare from the facet of the diamond reflecting into your lens, you can't make that look like a good ring shot. It's, it's nearly impossible. So when you think about your position and you see that glare, that reflection coming off the facet of the diamond, your position can be adjusted and modified in slight, slightly different ways in order to avoid that. So that's just one example of how powerful your position can be. But you maybe you've never thought about this before but whether you're shooting from above or you're shooting from below, or you're shooting from an angle, that's going to drastically change the final product of your ring shot. If you're just getting started, I recommend getting as low as you can and photographing that ring straight on. Make your position parallel to the facet of the ring. Try to photograph that same plane of focus because that's going to be the greatest position to be in in order to start to understand how this works and how sensitive your macro lens truly is. Okay, so just to recap, the three P's of ring shots are prongs, planes, and position. And if you can memorize that, then when you're on a wedding day or even an engagement session, you're just photographing one ring, then maybe when you start to get stuck or frustrated, some of these things will pop into your mind. And you'll realize, okay, that's where I'm missing it. That's the missing link. That's, that's where I'm struggling. So the three P's of ring shots, I hope you remember them, you memorize them. And if you have questions about photographing rings, if you have questions about photographing any bridal details, I would love to know. We would love to continue to create resources and YouTube videos that allow you to photograph bridal details with confidence so you're not fumbling around and 
wasting time on wedding days. This should be part of your wedding day that is fun. This should be part of the wedding day that you feel like you just know exactly how to conquer everything that's given to you. And I want to help you do that. So thank you for tuning in. I'm so excited that you are a part of our YouTube channel and subscribe. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss anything in the future.